Today I'll be showing you how to fix quite a common problem with a slim PlayStation 2 console. If you've got a slim PS2 and the console's not receiving any power, you might want to take a look and see if this issue applies to your console. If you've got a multimeter, you can check for continuity between the inner pin of the power jack and the two strips on the sides of the Ethernet jack. These two points should both be connected to the ground plane of the motherboard, so if we don't have continuity between them or if it's you know, inconsistent, that indicates there's either a break in the connection somewhere or there's something causing it to be intermittent. On this console we can see that I'm not getting any continuity here so there's obviously something wrong inside the console so let's open it up and take a look. So I've already removed the screws from this console, I've just got to cut through the warranty sticker to get the lid off, which obviously there's no warranty anymore so that's not going to matter. I don't want to go through taking the console apart in too much detail, your console might be slightly different to this one. If you're having any trouble getting yours apart then I'd recommend finding a guide specifically for your model of PS2. With those metal plates gone, we've now got the board on its own. I've just zoomed in on the motherboard around the power connector and you can see quite clearly there that there is a broken solder joint. One other thing I just wanted to add in here before we continue is that it's also a good idea to check the fuse and that's the part labelled F001 and you'll see it just to the left of the pin that had the broken joint in this case. Check for continuity across this part to make sure that the fuse is still good and if there's no continuity you'll also need to replace the fuse. I've already added a bit of flux to the joint so I'm just going to get some fresh solder now and with a nice hot solder in iron I'm going to add some fresh solder and reconnect this joint. That's looking good now, we've got a nice shiny joint there which is what you want to see and now we can test that the connection is definitely fixed. To test I'm just going to repeat the test that we did earlier when the console wasn't open, connecting the power jack with the Ethernet port. This time you can see that we are getting a value on the meter. The value itself doesn't matter just as long as something's being registered showing that you've got continuity between these two points. All that's left now is to get the console put back together and you should have a fully working PS2. I've already put the metal plates back on so let's get the rest of it done. So there we have it, a fully working PS2 console and it wasn't too difficult of a fix. The most difficult part is probably getting it apart and back together again properly. There's a few ribbon cables there that are a bit awkward. But if you're having this issue with your PS2 it's definitely worth taking a look at and seeing if you're able to fix it for yourself. 
So I hope you like this video, thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll stick around for the next one.